Hey, it's Random Code here, and today we're going to continue working on our CRUD application. And we're actually now at a point where we're just looking at CRUD for the backend at least. We now have get mapping, so we can get, we can post, we can create, and we can put an update. So in CRUD, we now have everything other than the delete part. And I haven't created it yet, so I thought we'd create it together today because it should be actually quite easy. We just quickly showcase, we now have our Again, I'll get, we can get all users. So last time we added a user, so now I have Hans and Leah. We can create new users by using a post and simply getting a slash create user and then giving them a new user with basic information. We could then also update it using put, where we give it an ID and then the parameters of the user we would like to update. So we would now like to add, instead of having a get, post, and a put, also a delete. So first we go inside our controller and I'm just gonna copy but I'm gonna be like reusing most of the functionality so we now have a delete mapping and let's call it delete user it's gonna be a public we're gonna take a response entity once again and we're gonna do it in the way where when you call into our delete endpoint you can then either get a or false or something like not found or we just give it an error if you can't delete or if the user you try to delete does not exist. But if the user you try to delete existed and deleted them, we will then return the integer of the, of the ID, just showcase like this person were deleted. And I'm just gonna call it delete user. And we're simply gonna take in a single request parameter of the ID. So we're not going to do like partial deletion or delete some information. We're just going to delete an entire user by ID. <clears throat> we then need to think how we want to do it. Because last time using put, we returned an entire user. All the information that we like updated. We could do it actually very much the same way again. Or let's just return the ID straight away. Let's think, does it make sense? Would we ever in the future have a setup we would like to return something else than just ID? Maybe. So I'm actually just gonna copy all of this and then say we would like to have an optional insertion to success. I mean, I'm gonna call it deletion success. I'm really gonna have uh, user service that delete. User, which takes in an ID, and I can't spell. So let's fix that. There we go. And the delete user, of course, doesn't exist. So we can then create method delete user in user service. There we go. It then creates it for us. And once again, I can't spell. There we go. And then inside our user controller, we then have our user ID equals null. We have our HTTP status conflict. Let's actually do a different HTTP status. Is basically let's do a. Uh, uh, let's see what could we do. Maybe conflict is actually fine. Simply want a situation where it's like clear. But then again, this is not going to be like a public open endpoint, so we're not like doing it to make sure everyone understands what's going on. It's mainly just set up for the, for the front end. So we then have our HTTP status, HTTP status conflict. And then if deletion success is present, so if we return a user entity, if there was a user to be deleted, we would then take our user ID from our deletion success and set our status to OK. And then again, return our user ID and our status. So we're actually doing more or less the same thing, both when posting, when putting and deleting, which is this basic concept of saying, if something was present and we did some kind of modification, return that entity and return ID just to showcase we did it, otherwise return our HTTP status conflict. And it's actually probably good we're doing the same thing. So it's similar. So inside our user service, it is actually quite simple we should be able to access our user repository, which also 
already auto wired in here. And we can simply do an user repository dot I think there's a delete by ID. And we then give it ID. And we should actually then see what it returns. I actually don't know if this one automatically returns. Let's actually see if we can do it like this. Let's see the return type. Oh, so it's actually void. So in this case, we now found that actually the lead by ID returns nothing. So just does it. So we actually don't know if it's possible or not. So what I would what I would like to do, is I think it would be let's do it in the way we actually just first extract. So we have an optional user to be deleted. It's then gonna be our user repository. But find ID, which is the method we have created ourselves. No, it isn't. <laughs> this is just the basic setup of user repository. I can't even remember if we created any methods. We just get user entity by ID. And we, let's just actually create. So we also had a method where we actually created, we just get to reuse the data, but find by the actually returns and an optional. So let's actually use that one. Because we can then simply do find by ID, give it our ID. And we can simply do if our user to be deleted dot is present. We will then simply take our user repository and delete by ID. And we will then return our user to be deleted. Which actually just work because if there's a user to be deleted, we will have an optional containing our user entity. Otherwise, it's going to be an empty optional. And if it's empty, we're not going to delete the user, and we're then going to return an empty optional. So I think actually this is, looks very simple and very clean. And if it works, which it should, it's actually quite nice. So let's actually just try running our application and have a look in Postman again. And let's actually first do a get all users, just to ensure we have Hans and Leah. We can then create a new endpoint, which is gonna be mostly similar. It's then gonna be a delete mapping. And our endpoint, let's make sure we get it right. It was delete user. So slash delete user, we can need to give it an ID as a parameter. And we know a user of ID two exists. So we should be able to say slash the lead user with ID one or ID two in this case. And we have a return of ID two and okay, everything should have gone through. We can now get all users and Leah's gone. And we should be able to call ID two once again. And we have an empty return body and we get a 49 config. So it actually works. So I hope you found it interesting in this video where I very much showcased like my process of how we just very simply step by step go through what we want to do. And then we'll, we're doing something, we learn something new and then using this new information, we can then change our setup a bit. But otherwise, I would just hope you enjoyed this short showcase of creating our delete mapping inside our fruit application. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful 